In British Columbia, Canada's Chilcotin people take on the mining industry to save their ancestral land. Coming up on Earth Focus. Everything you need, you can get right here in this small valley. This has always been a, a part of who we are. This water, all the plants, all the wildlife, all the air that we breathe in are very sacred to us. If the world found out that Canada was actually doing this, I think they would be surprised. Our people will eventually start losing their identity of who they are, what they are, and our, our way of life is going to be totally different. The Chilcotin have lived in British Columbia as long as anyone can remember. The heart of their country is the Chilcotin River, its tributaries, lakes, and streams. They have fought to protect it ever since the European settlers came here. Now the Chilcotin Nation is fighting a new battle. The claimed land sits on one of Canada's largest mineral deposits, and Tosico Mines Limited, a local mining company, wants to tap it. The project does go back into the, into the 70s and 80s, and in particular in the 90s, when the mining company tried to get it approved. And it was basically shut out uh, by the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. And they looked at the project and looked at the impacts of the project and really were not interested in, in allowing the project to go forward. Time went on, gold prices increased, political climates changed in both British Columbia and Canada, and the company, which had never given up on the project, tried again. And uh, the project was problematic in large part because in order to construct the mine, they were going to drain a very highly productive lake, which was full of rainbow trout, uh, impact streams in another lake, which are part of the greater ecosystem there. And the, the taking of a, a diverse and productive lake ecosystem for a 20-year mine was very controversial, both for the government and especially for the people whose traditional territory it is, the Tilcoteen people. Independent Canadian filmmaker Susan Smitten and her team made Blue Gold, a film about the Chilcotin effort to save Fish Lake. Their aim, to help present the Chilcotin case to a federal environmental review panel. Making this film was something that was, in fact, one of the hugest privilege of, of my filmmaking career, but it was obvious that a film needed to be made. There needs to be a film shot in a way that they're comfortable, where they can tell the story of what's at stake. Because only by hearing their story, only by understanding from them what really is at stake, could people empathize, could people connect, and could we perhaps get the change that was needed. People at first couldn't believe it, and then when they heard about it, they would say, well, this isn't going to be allowed to happen. But the truth was that Tosico Mines had a lot more money. The resources they were putting into this were immense because there was a lot at stake. So a small grassroots organization dug in, dug deep, and just worked at it bit by bit. And finally, the message started getting through to Canadians across Canada. So the money started to flow in so that the Chilcotin could afford to put forward the best case possible and based on the best science and the best facts that were available, they were able to prove that the plan as presented by Tosico Mines was not viable and was in fact ecologically permanently destructive. From an environmental perspective, this is a very problematic mine. It's in an area full of, of lakes and wetlands. It's perched on fractured bedrock above other lakes and very important salmon, salmon rivers and salmon streams. 
the ore body itself is full of cadmium and mercury. Uh, the, again, the environmental impact statement from the mining company suggests there's a, a risk of a cadmium plume extending underneath of the waste area out into adjacent water bodies. The waste disposal area itself, the tailings impoundment, would obliterate uh, a smaller but also healthy and productive lake full of rainbow trout called Little Fish Lake. And uh, there are risks to downstream water quality uh, on into the future. We don't really know what the quality of the water when the pit would fill up is. Um, and if there was contamination going downstream, that would put at risk the, the salmon stocks. The area is also <laughs> important grizzly bear habitat. And grizzly bears, especially in the southern interior, are threatened species. Tosico Mines Limited could yield 100 million pounds of copper and 235,000 ounces of gold. And that means big bucks for British Columbia, new jobs, and a boost for the economy. Tosico has emphasized over and over again the economic benefits of this project, which really are the only justification for this project to go ahead. Their arguments fall short on, on a number of fronts. Uh, they haven't really assessed the long-term costs of maintaining the site into the future. They haven't assessed the costs of the risks to the salmon downstream. And some of their economic arguments also are, are very much based on uh, high gold price going into the future, on an economy that just continues to grow and grow and grow, uh, that assumes that there will be a big demand for gold in India and China into the future. Uh, those are all, all, all assumptions that aren't necessarily guaranteed. The campaign to save Fish Lake was really a small group of incredibly dedicated people that started with the Chilcotin. Um, I think if you're going to work with someone um, starting up any kind of business, you need to consult with them, you need to communicate with them, and it's got to be a partnership between the two and there's definitely no partnership in this. I don't see the benefits of destroying our land and our waters and our fish. They say it'll create jobs and that but still it's just it's going to ruin our land and land's priceless to me. I can't replace it like after it's been mined. It's like the death of our people in a way. The way I see it, it's a, it's an, a form of genocide. You know, some people may not see it that way, but I do. I don't think there's no such thing as safe environment after it's mine. And you say 20 years or so, you'll get your land back. I don't believe it. I don't believe the country will be like this again. And how does that make you feel? <clears throat> that. After an environmental review, the Canadian government agreed in November 2010, giving the Tosico mining project a thumbs down. Their action came just after the government of British Columbia had granted a 25-year mining lease to Tosico. The opposition to this project is so strong that there is inevitably going to be conflict if it gets the authorization from the governments to go ahead. And that kind of conflict is not good for other businesses in British Columbia, other mining projects that want to go ahead. This is going to send a very uh, strong signal to the international community that BC is a place which you may or may not get your mine approved, and that will scare away investment from British Columbia. Um, you know, we were told that this project needs to be approved to do the opposite, to send a strong signal of support for uh, mining in British Columbia and to encourage investment. In January 2011, Tosico Mines resubmitted its proposal for the new Prosperity Mine Project at the same site. The company proposes not to drain Fish Lake and to move the tailing facility to another location. Opponents say Fish Lake would still be affected by toxic waste and die. The federal review process is expected to take a year.
many of us walked away from at, with the win, the first win on prosperity feeling, wow, isn't that great? Now we've been a bit shaken, but it has just shaken our resolve to stay strong. And I feel like in talking with the Chilcotin, they are just ready to hunker down and say, I'm sorry, a second time round doesn't mean it's right and doesn't mean it can go. We do not want to see Taltan B destroyed by the mine. Now on U.S. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.